my eyes tested, and in spite of the multiple adjustments they made to my lenses, I was still seeing very blurry, and frustrated I complained about this to the opticians. He speculated that perhaps it was because I'd started some new medication recently, but the thing is, he didn't actually know this about me, but he was absolutely right. So perplexed as to whether he had psychic abilities, I asked him how come he knew. Turns out my pupils were dilated. And of course, it all made sense then. You see, sometimes when you start taking a new medicine, it can actually cause the muscles in your iris to contract, which means that your pupil widens and more like than normally would will enter the eye, scattering at the back and forming a blurry image. You can get a really similar effect on your DSLR camera if you open the aperture as wide as it will go. This creates a very shallow depth of field and allows you to get those very creamy, bokeh, artsy pictures that everyone seems to love. Anyway, it was at this moment that it struck me. We humans are really focused on seeing clearly, but for other animals it really just isn't a big deal. And in this video, I'm going to tell you all about the cephalopods, such as the octopus and the cuttlefish, because they actually blur their eyes on purpose to do something very special. Cephalopods have always been a bit of a mystery to scientists. You see them swimming across the ocean floor and changing their skin to perfectly match the colour of their surroundings or putting on the most elaborate and colourful mating displays to their potential partners. But then when you look at the back of their eye, they only have a single photoreceptor type. You see, in order to be able to detect colour using photochemistry, you need at least two different types of photoreceptors. We have three of them for detecting colour, our cones, which detect three different wavelengths of light, and they send an integrated signal to our brain, which it then interprets as the colours that we see. Now, there are some advantages to having a single photoreceptor type, for instance, you're going to be a lot more sensitive in low light environments, such as the bottom of the ocean, but it doesn't really tell us how cephalopods are seemingly detecting colour. And it turns out that the answer lies in the shape of their pupil. We have a circular pupil through which light passes and focuses at the back of the eye, forming a sharp, crisp image. On the other hand, cephalopods have a really characteristic U, or W-shaped pupil, which means that the light enters the eye off-centre and the curvature of their eyeball actually splits the light into its constituent wavelengths and by altering the shape of their lenses they can control where each of these wavelengths fall in the back of their eye. Essentially, they're able to just focus across the different colours in their immediate surroundings. Anyway, if you ask me, I think cephalopods have killed three birds with one stone. They've gotten away without evolving fancy photoreceptors, they're able to see very well in the dark, and they can detect colours anyway by simply focusing in and out of different colours. So remember, next time it seems like something has psychic abilities, just look towards the laws of physics, because there's always more than meets the eye. I hope you enjoyed this and learnt something new today. Let me know what you thought, and if you want to find out even more about the fascinating vision of cephalopods, check out the full blog post I wrote on drawcuriosity.com, because it goes into a lot more detail if you want to find out more. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.